cholesterol is it good is it bad is it both so this is a very complicated I issue um, i have a lot of patients when uh, we do a lipid panel all of a sudden they see that total cholesterol is 230 240 and they're freaking out and many primary care doctors start putting people on statins right away statins are lowering the bad part the ldl part of the cholesterol and the question is, is that always necessary? And I think many times it is not. There are circumstances when statins uh, can and should be used, but it is really overused. And for most people that have a slight elevation of their total cholesterol, they don't really have to be so concerned about this. Always, of course, talk to your own primary care doctor uh, about your own blood work and uh, get some advice there. So cholesterol is um, divided into three main subcategories there's the hdl which we consider the good or protective cholesterol we want that to be as high as possible so think of h for high then there is the ldl which is the bad cholesterol which we don't like and you give statins to lower that okay um, however it's a very very useful part and we're going to talk about that and then there are the triglycerides now the triglycerides really are more a uh, function of how much carbohydrates you eat when uh, we do medical weight loss in my clinic, we always recommend to lower your carbohydrates as much as possible. Go on a low carbohydrate diet, especially cut out as much as possible simple sugars, and that includes fruit as well. No more than about one piece of fruit a day. Yes, fruit has healthy components to it, but the sugar in fruit, fructose, is actually really bad. And if you think of high fructose corn syrup, you heard the term before, that is just terrible for us. It's, it's a sugar that you know, uh, leads to fat storage. It's very unsightly. It's causing problems in metabolism and all that. Anyway, but back to cholesterol. So LDL, now is it really bad? So um, most of the LDL we use actually is very good for us. So when you think of LDL, LDL is actually not the cholesterol itself. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. So it is actually protein. It's like a, like a vessel, like a bus or, 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 or plane that um, shuttles the um, cholesterol around the body to where it's needed. And it's hugely important. Now, cholesterol is part of all of our healthy uh, cell membranes, so we need it specifically in the brain. So the neurons of our brain are highly dependent on a, a good content of cholesterol. And if we rapidly and artificially lower that over time, we may see increase in issues like dementia because we just, you know, we need that cholesterol there. And if we withhold it, there could be problems down the line. Also, cholesterol is needed for hormone synthesis. Our healthy hormones in our bodies are highly dependent on cholesterol. So when is cholesterol becoming bad? So again, LDL generally, there's nothing wrong with LDL. We need it. It shuttles around. You know, it, um, When you think of where does this come from to begin with, how much can be influenced with our diet? Well, only 15 to 20% is influenced by our dietary intake of fats. 80 to 85% of our cholesterol is made by the liver. So again, the amount you can influence by diet, first of all, is very small. Secondly, LDL, again, is not bad. It can become bad in the presence of sugar. And that's very important to understand. So when we say um, it is healthy to go on a low carb diet, part of it is as you lower your carbohydrate intake, you cut out the fruit juices and the smoothies and all these things, what you will see is that your triglycerides will come down. And that is very important. Triglycerides is the part of the cholesterol that is dependent on carbohydrates, as I mentioned earlier, right? And if you lower that, your risk of turning your good LDL that you need to bad LDL goes up. And that is because the um, LDL, as it circulates, it gives off its cargo, it donates cholesterol where you need it, and it comes back to the liver. It has a, a little molecule in it, it's called ApoB100. And that's kind of a key, it's like a signaling receptor that allows the liver and other tissues to recognize that this is LDL. Now, what happens when we have too much sugar in our system? The sugar damages this specific ApoB100 molecule. So now the LDL doesn't get recognized anymore. It doesn't know where to go. It keeps circling around and it can't really go back to where it should go to the liver and ultimately ends up in the arteries, in those endothelial cells lining the arteries. And that's dangerous. So when this LDL then, as it becomes oxidized and it's, and it's losing because of the presence of sugar, this ApoB100 molecule, it then finds uh, uh, you know, its way to the endothelial cells and our arteries and there 
it um, settles and there are foam cells that are forming and thickening of the artery and which ultimately can lead, lead to occlusion, which is atherosclerosis. So again, the LDL is fine until we expose it to too much sugar. So one thing we can do to decrease that risk is to cut down the sugar intake, specifically fruit, fruit juices, all these things, you know, they are not very helpful to your diet. Simple sugars, of course, pastries and cookies, you know, cut all these out. And then in general, you're decreasing uh, carbohydrate. So when you think of your normal diet, you really only have three things to play with. You have carbohydrates, you have proteins, and you have fats. So since I'm decreasing my carbohydrates, you know, and I'm keeping my healthy proteins pretty stable, that leads me with fats. Now, you're saying, well, but fats increase cholesterol. Again, only 15 to 20%, and fats are very healthy. So what are the fats that we recommend here in our clinic? And I always give examples of four. There are more than that, but four that are simple to incorporate in your daily diet. And they are butter, they are um, avocado oil, coconut oil, and then of course you can use for your um, salads, uh, olive oil. And olive oil is another one that is uh, very easy to use. I wouldn't cook with it. When you cook with olive oil, it kind of denatures. So again, very simple, butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, and olive oil. Um, palm oil is another one. It's usually hard to find in the supermarket. What are the fats that are bad that you shouldn't take in? And uh, these are the fats actually, we call them omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids vegetable oils or seed oils they're called and they're in everything unfortunately most processed foods have them and i always recommend to before you buy anything that's uh, packaged look at the content of there if it says soybean oil or if it says canola oil or sunflower oil don't buy it those are the oils that are very bad for us those are the oils that are contributing to atherosclerosis those are the oils that contribute to insulin resistance. Those are the oils that we really want to cut out of our diet. And again, they're in everything. You have to kind of look at everything that you um, buy in the supermarket, where it's present and where it's not present. So again, healthy oils, decrease carbohydrates, and then you don't have to worry too much about your total cholesterol. Always talk to your primary care doctor which way they want to go. If you have a cholesterol where your total cholesterol is on the higher side, then do a more um, in-depth lipid panel and we can usually find out also what fraction of that LDL has gone bad. I usually look at also things like a hemoglobin A1c and the fasting insulin which kind of tells me what is your um, insulin resistance and your sugar intake. But again in for simplicity having a low um, triglyceride level high HDL is protective. And then your LDL is really secondary. Then I don't care so much about it. So again, this is a complex issue. I'm gonna talk a bit more detail about it. There are a lot of papers on this. It's, sometimes it's a bit confusing, but there is a uh, physician that I think explained this really well. He's an Australian. It's Dr. Paul Mason. And a lot of his lectures can be found on YouTube. They're fairly long, but he really in depth explains more about um, cholesterol and you know breaks it down a bit more. Again, Dr. Paul Mason, I think he's excellent in explaining this and he gives you a lot more detail than what I did in this very quick video. Hope this helps. Thank you.